Hello everyone, my name is Natalie Parker. This is video 3 of my series on how to use ZDPlaskin. In my previous video, I talked about the ZDPlaskin software in greater detail, going through how each component works together. In this video, we are finally testing out our program. Before we begin, I have a couple of acknowledgments. I would like to thank the National Science Foundation and the University of Nebraska-Lincoln for providing me and funding my research, as well as giving me an opportunity despite the coronavirus pandemic. I would also like to thank Dr. Barry Chung and Deepa Chuardi for their mentorship in this program. So let's get started. The goals of this video are to download, run, and understand example one. I will walk through each of these steps to help you with any errors you might face. Step one, of course, we need to download. Um, on the ZDPlaskin website located in my description, you can find the two reaction test case underneath the download section. Read through this description and then download your zip file. Now, what's in this test? What are we doing? It is a super simple test where everything is included for you. In this case, we are working through two reactions, argon to positively charged argon and positively charged argon back to argon. We have almost everything that we already need to run this software, so there's no coding necessary for this first test. So what did we just download? In that zip file, after you've extracted it and opened it, this is what you should see. That first file is for people on Mac. Since I'm on Windows, this is insignificant for me. Second, that is the bullsigdb.dat. This is our database. It's already written for us. The bullsigdb.log shows what components that the database will use. Fourth is that connect.inp. This is where those reactions are that I showed you in my last slide. Um, uh, this also includes the elements, species, and interactions with my database. I'll show you guys what it looks like in the next slide. The out text file is the actual results. For the first couple of examples, your answers will be given to you, so this is just to check your accuracy. The user code is number six. The test underscore two dot F90 file shows your conditions and variables and things that you can change later on, but in this case, we don't gotta change anything. Well, except adding that QT Plaskin line. I'll get into that later. Um, uh, and finally, we have the ZD Plaskin module. This is that pre-processed connect.inp folder, so it's already good to use. Let's take a quick look at this connect.inp. So in this case, we have our four main parts plus that little intro and the end code. This format is really important when writing your connect.inp, but it's super easy to, easy to tell where your mistakes are, because it'll tell you. Um, there are a couple things that we do need to add. So in this case, there are four things. We need to add the preprocessor, which will convert our connect.inp into the ZDPlaskin module. I know in this case, we already have our ZDPlaskin module, but it's always good to get that practice in. And in this case, I'll show you how to use it. We also need to add the bullsig underscore g dot dll and the bullsig underscore g dot lib because they're crucial for reading our database. We also need the differential equation solver devote underscore f90 underscore m dot f90 as we need something that can solve our kinetics problem. Finally, we need to go into the user code itself and include that it wants to read and deposit a QT Plaskin file. So in that case, we're adding this line here. This is what um, will tell the code, hey, you want to bring these out as QT Plaskin results so we can plot them. Um, they are all shown in this file here, um, uh, those first couple ones I was talking about. This is located in the ZD Plaskin file. Um, so yeah, you'll want to add these each time to each of your re experiments. Um, uh, this is a quick visual of what my user code looks like. So you can kind of, I know, it looks scary. It's a bit intimidating, especially for me. It was like, whoa. Um, so we have these first couple lines right here, noting 18 through 21, 22. Um, this is all of our conditions that I'm using for this case. Um, these are the ones that you can change up later on, but just don't touch them for now because we want to get the same re results that we have been provided at the very beginning. But if we look down at line 43 down here, that's where I included that line that I had on the previous slide. Um, this is what will tell us, hey, you know, you want to have an output of QT Plaskin files so we can actually plot our stuff. Um, next up, I'm going to show you guys how to use the preprocessor. So this is the application used to convert the connect.inp into the ZDPlaskin module. 
I know it's already included, but it's always helpful to practice, you know? So open up that application and type connect.inp and hit enter. If you have no errors pop up, you should be able to name it. I suggest using the regular name zdplaskin underscore m dot f90 or just type period and hit enter. This will just name it the it'll just name it the same thing and put it into your file. Um, I've included the visual process, so this is what it's supposed to look like. If you're getting errors, it'll tell you like which part. And honestly, for this case, you shouldn't have any errors unless you modified anything in your connect.imp. All right, so next up, I can talk you guys through uh, running zdplaskin. First up, this is just what it looks like to use the command prompt. We need to get into our example, so this is just a visual of how to get there using, you know, cd. Um, I know for people that don't have any coding experience or experience or like working with Fortran before, I know that this might be a really good visual to come back to. Um, so that's why I included it for you. Next up, we got to have the big line. This is the big line. <laughs> it's just this guy right here. So go ahead and type gfortran-o and then you'll name it whatever you like. For this case, I'm using ex1.exe. Next up is devote underscore f90 dot underscore m dot f90, zdplaskin underscore m dot f90. Then we'll include our user code, the test underscore two react dot f90, and then the bullsig database reader, bullsig underscore g dot dll. And then once you hit enter, it should just show you the same sequence that you had earlier that I showed in my last slide right here. It should show you just this. Um, and that's when you're going to want to type um, whatever you named it. So in this case, ex1.exe, and then hit enter. This will show you a big old stream, um, and it'll also input your Qt Plaskin results into your file. All right, so this is a good, this is like the entire written visual of it. Um, so you can see I have my big old line of code. I put in the output, and then it just has a ton of stuff. And this keeps going. I just didn't want to, you know, overwhelm y'all. So let's look at those results we got. So uh, in order to open Qt Plaskin, um, uh, we want to, uh, you know, open the application, go to File, Import from Directory, and select Example 1. Um, this will show you different parameters, it'll show you density, reactions, and sensitivity analysis. Below I've shown the plots for reduced field and positively charged argon density. What does this all mean? Um, well, as we predicted, those two reactions work together to reach an equilibrium. This can be shown in the positively charged argon density graph, as it starts at zero and then levels off to uh, a little bit lower than 10 to the 14th. This test was super important as it was our first reaction. It was our first experiment to kind of test out the software, making sure we know what components we need along the way and uh, figure it out before things get a little more complicated. I would like to thank you all for joining me. I hope that this has helped you guys with learning how to use this program. But if you have any issues and you have any problems, feel free to email me personally at natdparker22 at gmail or join, or join our Google group. Both have been added into that description. Thank you.